Praise the Lord. All right, so as we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for this retreat. We bless your name for granting us journey mercies to be here. Thank you, Lord, for your protection upon everyone. I thank you because there's great, great expectation during this retreat. And we pray that the expectation of all your people will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, there will be a realization. There will be a performance. There will be a demonstration of the power of the blood of Christ in every life in Jesus' name. To the highest mountain, to the lowest valley, we pray that everyone will feel the touch of the Lord in Jesus' name. And the power that gives us strength the blood that gives us strength, the Christ that gives us strength, will move mightily in every life in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that this retreat will be a time of reunion together, a time of great revival, a time of great miracles in the lives of all your people in Jesus' name. Roll the mountains away. Let us feel and let us sense and let us see and let us experience once again the power of the blood of the cross of Christ. Fulfill your promise in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I welcome every one of you to our retreat at this time in Jesus' name. The old timers who have always been coming and to the newcomers, our invitees who are here, I pray that you will sense and experience the touch of the Lord in your life in Jesus' name. I pray that everything you desire and beyond everything you desire, all that God has for you, you will experience in Jesus' name. And like you have seen in our publicity, that you come to experience the power of his cross, you'll find that to be a reality in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Colossians chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 23 to verse 22. Colossians chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated, separated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now as he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. And somebody there said, Amen. You'll find in verse 20, talking about Christ and talking about what Christ has done and talking about what Christ is going to do in your life and talking about the readiness of the Lord to move every mountain away from your life talking about the power of the Lord to do everything literally everything in your life everything spiritual everything personal everything natural Everything supernatural is able to do all things in your life. He talks about that in verse 20 and he says it is through the blood of his cross. Through the blood of his cross. First of all, he tells us we're alienated from God. 
were separated from God, were being drawn away from God. But then the blood of the Lamb brings us to Himself, were reconciled unto God. And it says, after that reconciliation, then He begins to pour blessings into our lives. And you'll discover as we go through the references referring to the blood of the cross, the blood of Jesus Christ that is shed for you, for me, for us on the cross of Calvary. You're going to find that he's able to do all things between now that you are born again until the time you will see him in glory. In fact, he tells us at the end of that verse 22, it says he's able to present you holy it will happen unblameable it will happen and unreproachable unreprovable in his sight actually paul the apostle tells us quite a lot about christ christ at calvary christ on the cross and christ who has made everything available for you and for me and as we touch him by faith and we pray unto him knowing that the blood of Jesus Christ has provided everything that we need. As we touch him by faith, impossibilities will become possible in your life. And it will roll mountains of sin and mountains of sickness and mountains of satanic attack. It roll everything away from your life in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 1 verse 14. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 it says in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin it starts from something very basic and something very normal and something very foundational and it says he gives us redemption we confess our sins to him and we look to him on the cross of Calvary and he takes all our sins away he gives us redemption and then that brings reconciliation into our lives he cancels the judgment that had been upon our lives even because of our evil and he tells us it is by the blood of the lamb the blood of his cross look at chapter 2 in chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 14 it says in chapter 2 verse 14 it says blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and it took it out of the way nailing it to his cross you can tell there all the judgments that shall have been upon us Christ because of his death Christ because of his sacrifice Christ by his suffering he took all that judgment away and he nailed it to the cross the apostle is telling us quite a lot he's telling us from the point of redemption from the point of your salvation all through your life as you face the challenges of life he tells us the power of the blood the power of his cross is able to make us overcome you have overcome in chapter 3 it tells us from verse 1 chapter 3 is spoken about his death is spoken about his sacrifice is spoken about his suffering is talking he has spoken about a forgiveness our redemption our righteousness now he talks about his resurrection in chapter 3 of Colossians verse 1 if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God set your affections on things above not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. It's telling us that as he died, we died with him. As he was buried, we were buried with him. And as he rose again triumphantly, it says, we're risen with him. 
And because we experience that resurrection power all through the cross, he was betrayed, was crucified, he died, was buried, he rose again. And now he says, we're risen with him. And we seek those things above where Christ seated on the right hand of majesty and power. And then he reminds us, he says, we're dead, dead with him. And our lives are hid with Christ in God. You can tell there's a lot we learn, there's a lot we know, there's a lot we have through the death and through the burial and through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we have all this? How do we have all the benefits of the cross? How do we experience the power of the blood of the Lamb that was shed for us by prayer? Look at verse 2, chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 2. It says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. This retreat should be a retreat of praying because we pray, we possess. We pray, we receive. We pray, and the bodies of our lives are rolled away. We pray, sins are forgiven. We pray, souls are saved. We pray, believers are sanctified. We pray, the sick are healed. We pray, the oppressed are delivered. We pray, and then we become more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And He's saying, everything that He has revealed concerning Christ, concerning His cross, concerning the blood, and concerning the power of resurrection that is able to move every mountain away from our lives. He says, everything He has revealed unto us will be beneficiaries of them, will be possessors of them, will be partakers of them. As we pray, continue in prayer, you will pray. I said you will pray, and we will pray, and God will open the heavens, and he'll bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Chapter 4, verse 12, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, salutes you, always laboring fervently for you in prayer. You see that? It's saying that what we're going to have, what we're going to experience, what we're going to possess, is as we labor fervently in prayer. I believe that you'll make this retreat a period of praying. A period of seeking the face of the Lord. A period of bombarding heaven with your request. So that all the problems of your life during this time with the power of prayer and with the power of faith looking to Christ on the cross. All those problems, they'll be rolled away in Jesus' name. And if you were weak before you came, you are going to become strong. If you are dirty or defiled, you are going to become clean. And if in any way you have almost given up, new strength will come to you. A new power will come to you. And the authority of the believer with the anointing of the believer will be multiplied in your life in Jesus' name. Laboring fervently for you in prayer that she miss, that she shall stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. To stand perfect and to stand complete in all the will of God. And that comes through the power of the blood of his cross. As we look at the message tonight, the blood of his cross, we're going to consider three points. Number one, the purpose of his sacrifice on the cross. When Christ died on the cross, it was a sacrifice. There have been sacrifices from the Old Testament. Sacrifice to take their sins away. But it was sacrifices of animals. But now Christ came to put an end to all those sacrifices because he became the final sacrifice for our sin. 
And so we're talking about the purpose of his sacrifice on the cross. Number two, the purity of the saints through his cross. The purity of his saints through his cross. Number three, the partakers of all sufficiency by his cross. The partakers, those are the possessors. Those are the people that receive. Those are the people that will discover there is power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power in the cross of Jesus Christ. And then as you come, and you come believing, and you come praying, and you come holding on to the promise of God that cannot fail, you become a partaker, a possessor in Jesus' name. And not just a possessor of a few things, but a partaker, the possessor of all sufficiency by his cross. Come to number one, the purpose of his sacrifice on the cross. The purpose of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Do you remember the first time when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared unto John? This is John chapter 1. Reading from verse 29. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him. And he says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He says, Behold, I see him. He wants you to see him, the Lamb of God. He wants you to understand all that the blood of animals have not been able to do. The blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus will do. He wants you to understand all that your struggles and your trials and your trying, all that you could not do. He says, Christ has come to do that in your life. And he says, Behold the Lamb. Do you feel the weight of your sin? Behold the Lamb. Do you feel the insufficiency of your trying to be holy? Behold the Lamb. Do you feel the guilt and the condemnation of sin upon your life? It says, Behold the Lamb. Have you tried and tried and failed and failed? It says, Behold the Lamb. Are you feeling that judgment is coming? And that because of your sins, you are likely to fall into judgment and be destroyed by the fiery consuming fire of the judgment of the Lord. It says, Behold the Lamb. Are you feeling that already even though you say you are saved internally you are weak and there's a peculiar sin that bothers your life it says behold the lamb that taketh away behold the lamb that taketh away that is it takes all those sins away it takes it away number one from the record of god because every time somebody commits sin it is reaching down and when it is reaching down, if you don't repent, if it is not forgiven, the remembrance of it is always there. But Jesus came and he sacrificed. He died on the cross for you and for me. And when he was nailed to the cross, that brings the possibility that the record of your sin will be blotted away. Behold the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. And it says it's for anybody and everybody in the world. Because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this very time, at this very moment, and in this very place, all those sins you have committed, all those uh, condemnations and guilt that you have, everything can be taken away right now. All you need to do is to behold the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. Do you feel so weak that you feel the presence of sin always there? My sin is ever before me. No matter what I do, no matter how I try, and no matter how much I try to be religious, the sin is always there. The pressure is always there. And John says, solution has come. 
the solution of the guilt and the solution of the condemnation and the solution of the weakness and the solution of the presence of sin always in your life behold the lamp of God that taketh away the sin of the world you see in the Old Testament when they brought all those sacrifices it was only for the Jewish people for the children of Israel Aaron was a high priest only for the children of Israel and all those Levites were ministers only for the children of Israel. But now, but now, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever in the wide world that believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So then John reminds us this is not a local sacrifice. This is not a native sacrifice. This is not a localized sacrifice. This is for the whole world, for the white and the black, for the men and for the women, and for the young and for the old, and for you even today in this generation. And so he calls upon you, Behold the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world, that blood will avail for you. I said that blood will avail for you. You don't have to say, I don't know whether I'm to be saved or not. Of course, of course, it's for the whole world. Of course, it's for the whosoever. Of course, it's whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank God your salvation is available. In First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Stop there for a moment. Himself bore, carried, took our sins on himself on the tree, on the tree, on the cross. The same thing because the cross was made of wood. That's why it says of the tree. And he said, he himself, after John had said, Behold the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. Now he tells you that Jesus, when he sacrificed himself on the cross of Calvary, he did that so that he could bear the punishment of your sin. He took that, the power of your sin. He took that away. The guilt of your sin, he took that away. The punishment of your sin, he took that away. Even the remembrance and the memory of your sin, he took that away. The record of your sin, he took that away. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we after we have repented that we after we have believed in him that we after we recognize that sacrifice was for me that we after we hold on to that Christ who died for us that we after we identify with the Christ who has taken our sins away he says that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes by whose stripes ye were healed he healed our soul he healed our spirit he healed our body he healed anything that is weak anything that is sick anything that is lowly anything that is suppressed in us and that total all-round healing will be yours through him in jesus name first peter chapter three in first peter chapter three i'm reading from verse 18 for christ also as one suffered for sins you see that he didn't commit any sin. He didn't do any evil sin. 
but for your sin, but for your evil. It says, Christ also. That's the final sacrifice. That's the sacrifice for your sin. That Christ also has suffered for sins. The just for the unjust. The sinless for the sinful. The perfect for the imperfect. The holy for the unholy. The eternal, the immortal for the mortal that is saying although he was perfect and you imperfect although he was holy and you unholy although he was sinless and you sinful all the same the holy one the sinless one the pure one the perfect one he went to the cross for you and it says the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God be put to death in the flesh and quickened by the spirit he died put to, put to death in the flesh and then quickened risen he rose in mighty resurrection on that resurrection morning you see the purpose of that sacrifice the purpose is to have us forgiven the purpose is to set us free the purpose is to so change us that the power of sin is nullified in our lives and I pray you'll experience that in your life in Jesus name the fullness of his salvation and the goodness of the result of his redemption Ephesians chapter 2 in Ephesians chapter 2 reading here from verse 16 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 16 and that he might reconcile both unto God and that he might reconcile both unto God. He's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. The religious and the idol worshipping people. That the blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ was to reconcile us to God. Take us out of sin. Take us out of evil take us out of enmity with God and bring us to God and link us with God that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross you see that having slain the enmity thereby it's that cross of Jesus Christ that removed the enmity the enmity man had against God that the sinner had against the holy God, the enmity that was inborn, the enmity that was caused by fear, because he knows that God is a God of judgment. He says, Christ has now come. And as Christ has now come, he has come to take away that enmity. And then he reconciles us to God. And you don't see him as the judge anymore. You see him as father. Are you able to say, Abba, Father? Look at verse 17. And he came and preached, proclaimed peace to you, which were far off, and to them which were near. Afar off, the Gentiles, those who were near religiously, the Jews, and he proclaimed peace unto both. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father through Jesus Christ and through that sacrifice that he made for us. Now we can have access to the Father. And as you are there and you feel so detached from God as you are there and you feel so far away from God as you are there 
and you feel alienated from God, look at Christ. Look at that sacrifice. Look at the blood he shed for you. And look at the sin he has done so that he'll take all that alienation, all that separation, all that condemnation. He takes everything away. And then he reconciles you to the heavenly Father. Colossians chapter 2. In Colossians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 11. Colossians chapter 2. We're reading here from verse 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision without hands. It's talking about something richer now and something deeper and something higher. It's spoken about forgiveness. It's spoken about reconciliation. It's talking about it's spoken about taking the enmity away. Now he's talking about something, the imprint nature, the depravity, the root of sin, something you brought into the world. And he says, it's by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary that he even takes all that inbred nature, original dirt and defilement, that he takes that away by the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. That's a lot. Christ has done by his sacrifice. And as you appropriate that and say, Praise the Lord, that's for me. You'll discover that he'll cleanse you. He'll set you free. He'll break away from you. Even the original sin and the weakness that you had originally. And as you say, I know the scripture is true. I know that whatever people say, whatever people understand, whatever people do not understand, look at what Christ has done by his death on the cross of Calvary for me, that there is a circumcision without hands, a putting off of the body of the root of the nucleus of sin, the sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ. He says in verse 12, buried with him completely identified with him completely associated unto him completely joined unto him buried with him in baptism wherein also ye are risen with him through the face of the oppression of God who has raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, as he quaking together with him, having forgiven you how many trespasses? All trespasses. And I pray that that experience will be yours in Jesus' name. Look at this one, verse 14 blotting out the andrighting of ordinances that was against us. That is, everything you have done, and because of all those things you have done, like that hand wrote against Belshazzar, which and found wanting. It says, because of Christ, because of his sacrifice, because of the shedding of his blood, it says, he has blotted away, he has taken away the handwriting that was against you which was contrary to us and he took it out of the way nailing it to his cross verse 15 and having spoiled principalities and powers powers of darkness are defeated i can't hear my people and all those powers of darkness they are displaced they will not bother you as you trust in the blood of the Lamb, as you trust in the power of His cross, He says, having spoiled principalities and powers, 
he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it and that triumph will be transferred to every one of our lives in jesus name he grants us forgiveness he grants us reconciliation he grants us redemption he grants us freedom he grants us the blotting away of ordinances against us he grants us freedom from the power of evil spirit or powers of darkness all by the sacrifice of jesus christ that he did for us on the cross of calvary and he sets us free what is sacrifice hebrews chapter 9 hebrews chapter 9 reading from verse 24 hebrews chapter 9 verse 24 for christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures the shadows the pictures of the true but he has entered into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God tell me those last words there tell me out loud to appear in the presence of God for me somebody there I said for me he has appeared in the presence of God for me think about that you felt guilty you felt condemned you felt weak you felt powerless you felt you were going rushing unto the judgment day and before you get to that judgment day christ has appeared in the presence of god for you and he's saying i died for him i died for her and because he died for you judgment is taken away condemnation is taken away look at that again for christ is not entering to the holy places made with hands which are the shadows and the figures and the pictures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god for us not yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood the blood of others for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once but now once that single death but now once that sacrifice on the cross of calvary but now once in the end of the world as he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself that means now you can trust the lord that means you can say lord i come so that all this feeling of guilt all this condemnation all this weakness you take away all the feeling of the presence of sin because you have made the sacrifice for me I'm looking at chapter 10 from verse 14 Hebrews chapter 10 verse from verse 10 but the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all that word offering there means sacrifice read it that way now by the which will were sanctified 
through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ for once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. He's saying that the sacrifices of those Old Testament priests could never take away sin. What makes the sacrifice of Jesus higher, greater, more beautiful, more efficacious than all the sacrifices of the Old Testament? But this man, Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin, forever sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till the enemies be made his footstool. Verse 14, for by one offering. Verse 14, for by one sacrifice, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. He will perfect you. Do you believe that? I said he will perfect you. Whereof the Holy Ghost in verse 15 also is a witness to us. For after he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make. With them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and their minds, in their minds, will I write them. He'll do that for you. I pray he'll do it this time. He'll write his word indelibly, indelibly in your heart. Write everything on your mind. The Spirit of God will be there. The Word of God will be there. And the Spirit of God reminding you, here is the way. Walk ye therein. And then in verse 17, And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Personal and uh, my sins and my iniquities will he remember no more. Read it out like yourself. Personal, one, two, three, go. That means when you come to Christ. That means when you turn away from that sin. That means when you call upon the name of the Lord, he will, so, he will so cleanse you, he will so change you, he will so turn your life around that he says all your sins, all your transgressions, all your iniquities, he will remember no more. What do we do now? Verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. When he sees the sacrifice of his only begotten son, when he looks at the cross on which Christ died for you, and then he sees you holding on by faith to that sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, he is faithful who has promised he'll take all your sins away. He'll write your name in the book of life in heaven. And when you leave this world because of Christ, because of Christ, he'll take you straight to the presence of God where Christ has gone to appear for you. You'll be there. Point number two now is the purity of the saints. The purity of the saints through his cross. Look at this. The first scene, we were sinners. We couldn't save ourselves. We couldn't change our lives. Then we looked at Christ on the cross of Calvary. 
we heard the proclamation behold the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world and we looked at him by faith looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith and as we looked unto him all our sins dropped off we're no more sinners we become saints a change has happened conversion has taken place transformation has been effected in our lives now we are saints as well as sons of god and now that cross still has more for you that cross still has more for me because number one we are peace with god we are pardoned from god through the cross and now as the sons of god and as the saints of god we come to him and he gives us purity the purity of the saints through his cross the purity of the saints through his cross hebrews chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 25 and verse 26 hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 wherefore he is able our god is able he is able our christ is able wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever live to make intercession for them there are many people that only think about the prayer of christ on the cross but you know after he prayed on the cross forgive them father for they know not what they do then he died then he rose again on the third day and after appearing to his disciples for those infallible proofs and evidence of his resurrection after 40 days he went to heaven and is seated on the right hand of majesty on high and now he says he ever liveth to make intercession for those who are saved is praying for you i said the lord is praying for you verse 26 for such an high priest became us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens he talks about christ and he says is able to save us to the uttermost because he's praying for us he himself is without sin and now he wants our lives to be so clean to be so pure to be so righteous that the blood cleanses and washes and purges and purifies and he grants us the purity of the saints first john chapter one verse seven in first john chapter one verse seven but if we walk in the light you will walk in the light you are born again you will not walk in darkness anymore and but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood and the blood and the blood of jesus christ his son what does he do cleanses us from all sin he can do it for you he will do it for you the purity of the saints the cleansing of the saints the transformation of the saints that Christ by his blood, Christ by that single sacrifice acceptable unto the Father. It says it cleanses us from all sin. It grants us salvation 
And then he grants us sanctification, the purity of the saints. Titus chapter 2. Reading from verse 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, all mankind, in the west, in the east, in the south, in the north. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto me. You must never forget that all these promises are yours in particular. And you could read that and just run away and not understand this is yours. The grace of God that bringeth salvation, free salvation. The grace of God that bringeth salvation, full salvation. The grace of God that bringeth salvation, final salvation. The grace of God that bringeth salvation, salvation for your soul, salvation for your spirit, salvation for today, salvation throughout your life, salvation for the future. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto men, unto me, unto you. I pray you receive it in Jesus' name, teaching us. That denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live, tell me, soberly, the next word, righteously, the next word, and godly. When? I said when? In this present world. Praise the Lord, the blood of Jesus is mighty and powerful and strong enough. That when you hold on to that, and when you believe that, it will set you free from all the chains and the shackles of sin. Because that grace, grace means that it is free for everyone, available for everyone. The grace that brings total salvation has appeared unto everyone. And as you receive that tonight, it will set you free completely from unrighteousness and ungodliness in Jesus' name. Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Look at verse 14, who gave himself for us. Who gave himself for you give me a good amen. amen who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity wonderful that he might redeem us from all iniquity what if everywhere you go every temptation that comes your way you say Christ has appeared and Christ has sacrificed and Christ has paid the final, the total penalty. And Christ has given me the provision so that he will completely redeem me from all iniquity. And purify, and purify, and purify unto himself. A peculiar people, zealous of good works. He will do it. I said he will do it. With all those assuring passages of scripture. Telling us that this is what Christ has done. Telling us that this is why Christ died. That he has died to give you peace and pardon. He has died to give you purity and holiness. As you trust him. As you believe him. As you hold on to him and say, I will not let you go until I experience that, it will happen in your life. 
Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. Reading from verse 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 15 verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. See what happens. Christ died. And then we proclaim that death. We exalt that death. We reveal that death to the people that listen to us. And we say, there's forgiveness through that blood. There's reconciliation through that blood. There's redemption through that blood. There's righteousness through that blood. There's sanctification through that blood. There's a purifying of the heart through that blood. And we say everything that Christ needs to do has been done. All that remains is for you to come and trust him. And the moment you trust, he will purify you. In this retreat, he will do and fulfill these great promises of God in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 24. The necessity for such purity of the saints. Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart that's why it's necessary for us to get to heaven for us to be accepted into heaven for us to live in heaven for us to be in fellowship with the thrice holy God and for us to be with the saints on high we must have clean hands and a pure heart. And thank God the sacrifice of Jesus has made that available. And as you pray, and as you tell the Lord, and as you concentrate on that, and say, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to his cross I cling, it will happen. Psalm 51. Reading from verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me. Purge me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Purify me. Purge me with Aesop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. When God is doing the purging, when Christ is doing the purifying, when the blood that flowed from Calvary is the thing that is washing and cleansing and purging and purifying, you'll be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins. Blot out how many iniquities? All my iniquities create in me a clean heart. O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He will do it. In Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. Reading from verse 11. He that loveth pureness of heart. He that desireth pureness of heart. He that cherishes 
pureness of heart. He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his leaves, the king shall be his friend. If you want the king of kings and the lord of lords to be your friend, to be close to you, to have fellowship with you on earth, in heaven, the pureness of heart is very important. That's why it says in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. I pray this blessedness will be yours in Jesus' name. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. You see, that's what it takes for you to see God. Not only on earth here, seeing God on earth. That's not to be compared or seeing Him after this world. And if your heart is cleansed, if your heart is purified, if the blood of Jesus washes you whiter than snow, if you lean upon the Lord and trust in the Lord, and He cleanses you, and He purges you, and He purifies you, in one word, if He sanctifies you, through the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb, on that final day, when you leave this world, you will see God. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Reading from verse 19. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. That's how we enter. You come to the presence of God and everything you need that Christ has provided on the cross. Everything you need that the blood of the Lamb has provided. And God is waiting for you to ask Him so you can receive. It says, you come by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having an high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith as you come to pray to the Lord tonight and as you come to pray to the Lord during this retreat or any period, any time, you come in the full assurance of faith because God is a faithful God and He will answer your prayer. He will pardon every sin. He may go to Amen. Yeah. He'll purify every heart. Another Amen. Yeah. He will make the weak strong in Jesus' name. Yeah. So let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised he will answer your prayer Point number three now, the partakers of all sufficiency by his cross. The partakers, that means the possessors of all sufficiency by his cross. In Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1. Verse 12 
giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, which had made us fit, which has made us ready to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has made us ready, has made us qualified, has made us fit, so we don't need to think, will I be accepted? Will I not be accepted? He will accept you. He will receive you. And you'll be a partaker tonight in Jesus' name. Forgiveness, you'll be a partaker. Pardon, you'll be a partaker. Peace, you'll be a partaker. Purity, you'll be a partaker. Power, you'll be a partaker. Authority, you'll be a partaker. Anointing, you'll be a partaker. Because it says, partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Look at verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. All powers of darkness are crushed in Jesus' name. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. It says in him, we have that redemption, even the forgiveness of sins. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated, separated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now, as he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you, to present me, to present who? To present you, holy, unblameable, unreprovable, in his sight look at verse 23 if ye continue I will continue if ye continue I will continue if ye continue somebody there I will continue if ye continue in the faith we don't slide back to unbelief we don't slide back into doubting we don't slide back into our sins it says hey you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached unto every creature which is under heaven Whereof I, Paul, a mage, a minister. Look at verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you the hope of glory Christ in you the hope of glory you open the door of your heart he comes in he comes to stay he comes to abide he comes to bless he comes to cleanse he comes in to purify he comes in to empower. He comes in to make you come alive, to quicken you. Christ in you, the hope of glory.
chapter 2 of Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ, received Christ Jesus the Lord, it says, So walk ye in him. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, it says, If you're going to be a partaker of everything he has provided on the cross of Calvary, so you walk in him. Look at verse 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Whatever we need, everything is in Christ. Whatever the Father has promised, everything is in Christ. It says, all the fullness of the Godhead abides in him. And now he tells us in verse 10, and ye are complete in him. He'll make you complete. Which is the head of all principality and uh, power. Chapter 3 of Colossians, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, you see what he's saying? He's saying, Come to Christ, abide in Christ, live in Christ, let him live in you. You died with him, you were buried with him, you rose with him. You are seeking those things now which are born. It says, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above. Like you search a wristwatch. Set your affections on things above. Like you set a compass, set your affections on things above. Like you set your mind on something and you will not let go. Like you focus your attention on something and you will not let it go. Like you focus your aspiration on something and you'll not let it go set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is seen with Christ in God when Christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory I will appear with him in glory I said you will appear with him in glory because he says if we set our affections on things above and we're looking on those things above and we're saying Lord I'm waiting for your coming I'm waiting for your appearance and I want to rise with you I want to be raptured when you come he says if that is what you set your mind on and you believe that when he comes he will take you home it will happen to you in Jesus name then he tells us in verse 16 chapter 3 let the word of Christ dwell in you richly let the words of Christ the promises of Christ the provision of Christ from Calvary the privilege you have in Christ revealed to you in his word let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace 
in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. It says now that you come to Christ, now that you have tasted of Calvary, now that you have tasted his pardon, now that he purifies your heart, now that he empowers you to live to his glory, he says whatever you do, don't do it superficially. Don't do it with eye service. Don't do it with half of your mind. Don't do it as if you're sleeping on the job. He says, bring all your heart, bring all your strength, bring all your enthusiasm, and bring all your skill. And he says, whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord, he shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. And now, as we come to a conclusion of the blood of his cross, the provision he gives. The purpose for that sacrifice, the purity he showers on us, and the possession that he gives us as we trust him and we look to Calvary. The question is, what do we do? How do we make these things ours? Colossians chapter 4. Verse 2, continue in prayer. Make this retreat a retreat of seeking the face of the Lord. Don't allow this retreat to come and go and leave you the way you came. A change must happen. You must climb up higher on the ladder of spirituality. You must have the possession of the saints. A transformation of your heart, of your life, of your goal, of your dream, of your focus. You must come up higher. I said you will come up higher. The power of his cross must work in your life. The power of the blood must work mightily in your life. And all the doubts that you brought here must evaporate away. All the weaknesses of your life, everything must go away. And all the feeling of deficiency, the feeling of insufficiency, and the feeling of powerlessness, everything must vanish away. It will happen. I said it will happen. Because you will pray. And God will answer your prayer. And he will give you everything you are asking. And much more, much more. That you are asking, it will grant unto you in Jesus' name. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanks given. And our leaders too will be praying for us. Verse 12. Epaphras was one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers that she may stand perfect. 
all those rough corners in your life the Lord will wipe away he will chisel away in Jesus name all the imperfections he will wash up all the impurities the Lord will cleanse up because we're laboring fervently in prayer that she may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Greater provision is coming upon your life, in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, in your family, in the work of your hand, in the ministry you hold in the church. You are going to come up higher. Higher, higher. Stand up and receive. You tell the Lord, Lord, I come. Grace is available. Strength is available. Power is available. Purity is available. Everything you need. Everything you need. But you must pray. You must raise your voice to the Lord and say, Lord, here I come. Do something for me. Take me higher.